going to read today from John's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. Listen for God's word to you. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am a good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. The Word of God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the words that are recorded of Jesus' own explanation of who he is and what he has come to do. And we thank you for the simplicity of his metaphors. And we thank you that in that we can sense an intimacy with you. And so we ask, Lord, that you would help us as we consider that text together to open our hearts and, and hear your own voice. Help us in our reflection. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> I want to ask, are you able to hear me all right, Colleen, when I'm using this microphone right now? Yes, you're kind of fading. I'm kind of fading. Yeah, no. but you've got your file over there. I'm much better out of that. Can you? Where's Isabel? Yes. Can you hear me all right with this? You can. It's better from the pulpit. I know it's better from the pulpit. I just wanted to check. This is a brand new microphone unit uh, because the other one was having so many problems. So I wanted to see if you could hear. Maybe if you could turn it up just a little bit, uh, Kathy. Let's see, how's that? Yes. Oh, okay, there we go. Colleen, can you hear that now? That's okay? Okay, you know what I'm asking because you're responding, so that's a good sign. Okay. Uh, so, as we <laughs> reflect, remember what we were actually talking about now was the, the story of uh, Jesus being the good shepherd. He identifies himself as the good shepherd. And, of course, that's a metaphor, right? We all understand that. That Jesus isn't actually holding a shepherd's staff. Although we depict them, we don't have uh, images in our church that way, uh, but in many churches you will see that image. Jesus, the good shepherd, holding a shepherd's staff. And what does a shepherd do? The shepherd protects the sheep, right? The shepherd makes sure all the sheep are accounted for. Jesus used other parables also about counting the sheep, right? The one was lost out of the 99, and the shepherd goes after that one lost sheep. He, he knows his sheep. He knows when one is missing, and he goes in search of it. Jesus liked this metaphor uh, for who he, who he is. That he is a shepherd who cares for us. And he knows us all by name. Isn't that great? He knows us and we can know him. And we know the shepherd's voice. We, but he knows our bleeding. Right? That's what sheep do. Bleed. Right? Uh, I, I like that idea that God knows our sheep voice. Uh, that even if we're not making any sense, if we're not intelligently speaking, God knows who we are. God knows uh, when we're in need and when we're hurting, and, and the, sh the good shepherd can reach out to each and every one of us. So it's a metaphor. 
It's a metaphor because we really can't express who God is uh, fully and, and make sense of it. We, this universe is just so massively uh, impressive and beyond our imagining, and God is greater than this universe. And so the only way for us to understand uh, aspects of who God is is to use metaphors. There's no way around it. We can't simply explain God directly. We have to use images, symbols, pictures, metaphors. And that's true all through the Bible. It has always been that way. God tells Moses, I am who I am. He doesn't say uh, in ways that fully explain who God is. He, he has to explain that, look, look Moses, I am who I am. You're never going to know my fullness and, and you're never going to be able to take into yourself. Just trust me, I am who I am. <laughs> um, he meets him in a burning bush, right? A burning bush. I, I always wondered as a kid, well, what does that have to do with God? How does this burning bush, the bush doesn't get consumed by the flame, but I still, that, that just kind of lost me as a kid. And if I'm honest, I'm still a little bit lost about that. What's going on with the burning bush? But God is in that burning bush, speaking to Moses. There's other metaphors that are more familiar, maybe. We think of God as Father. We think of God as King. Right? Uh, the scripture uses these images to describe who God is. It uses other more abstract uh, images. I'm a fortress, right? the psalmist. You are my fortress, my rock you are. Right? These are metaphors for who God is. The strangest one, and maybe if you really understand the story well from the Old Testament, is God as a smoking fire pot. Yeah, go back to Genesis chapter 12 or 13 right in there. And uh, or chapter 16, I think, is when the fire pot shows up uh, with Abraham. Abraham experiences the very presence of God as a smoking fire pot. Now, that's all I'm going to say today about that, but it's a metaphor. Go, go read about it, and uh, you'll, you'll get a glimpse of God in a new way. A good shepherd is a metaphor. And that's what Jesus uses to explain who he is. And yet, it's a strange metaphor. Not as strange as a smoking fire pot. But it's strange because, did you notice what Jesus says about what he comes to do as a good shepherd? He repeats five times in this passage, this short passage that we just read, five times, I lay down my life for the sheep. Wait a minute. Is that, is that what shepherds really do? Do shepherds normally lay down their life for their sheep? I don't think so. <laughs> don't shepherd dogs uh, fight wolves off and maybe they'll die? Shepherd dogs might risk their lives to protect the sheep. And maybe, maybe a shepherd, a really enthusiastic shepherd, uh, who passionately loves his flock, uh, will give his life to protect them. But normally, that's not the role of the shepherd. Is it? The shepherd does defend them, protects them, watches over them, brings them to market, so he's not always defending their life. <laughs> Sometimes he's bringing them so that we can have good Passover uh, lambs. Right? But, Jesus says, I lay down my life for the sheep. I can, see, I can see the defense and protection and all that. But it's not usually the shepherd's role to die for the sheep. And Jesus just repeats that, and repeats that in that short passage. So, it's very striking. And, and I'm still reflecting on the meaning of the cross here, and the way Jesus understands uh, and is expressing who he is to us. And so the, the shepherd has this strange role that actually seems to mix up metaphors. 
Because another of the great metaphors of Scripture is the Lamb of God. Right? Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So the Lamb is the one who dies. The Lamb is the sacrifice whose blood is spilled uh, to cleanse and to take away the sins. But why is the shepherd dying? Uh, that's not in the story here, but these are both metaphors that you find in Scripture about who God is and what's happening. And I think that's critically important because so many times we tend to think that what we are reading is a, just a straight and direct uh, way of explaining who God is. And so uh, this metaphor helps us see a different angle. There's so many Christians in, in our world today just, just see what Jesus does as that sacrificial man. That he's an atoning sacrifice. That Jesus came to die for us, and that was his entire role. That he came to take my place, to be a substitute for me in taking a punishment and a retributive kind of justice that God strikes down Jesus instead of me. Now, I have trouble, actually, with that metaphor, and I think we all should have a little trouble with that metaphor. It turns... God's act of salvation into a violent act of retributive justice. A violent way of bringing, oh, thank God Jesus took it. So I don't have to, but somebody had to pay. Right? Now that makes sense in a world like ours, doesn't it? That, in fact, is probably the most intuitive way of understanding justice. You hurt me, I'm going to hurt you. You did something wrong, you're going to pay for it. Uh, that's retributive justice. Old Testament. Old Testament, but you can find it in the New Testament too. Old Testament, animal sacrifice, name of God. New Testament, Christ. Yes, yeah. So, Paul even uh, makes a big deal of this, right? In the New Testament. That this is, uh, but this is, mirroring and picturing what was happening in the Old Testament in the temple, in the sacrificial lands. Yes. I think that's all true. I think it's all there, but it's a metaphor to explain something beyond itself. It's not the thing in itself. You hear what I'm saying? Salvation is not the thing in itself when it is described as the killing or sacrifice of a lamb. You know, the, even the Old Testament, the, the prophets understood that you could, you could slaughter a thousand lambs, but if there's no change, then, then it's meaningless. A sacrifice, if you look at uh, uh, David's prayer in Psalm 51, the, the sacrifice that God desires is a broken and contrite heart. Is. Interesting. He's not just depending on going through the ritual emotions of the sacrificial man. But that sacrificial man pictures for us something that connects and makes sense in our understanding of the world. I grew up with retrib retributive justice was the norm growing up. If I did something wrong, whack! I got smacked. How many of you got that? Yeah. Retributive justice. I learned in my lessons most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Larry didn't. Okay. Larry, Larry never learned that retributive justice uh, idea. Um, but we all learned that. And that, that goes back all the way through human history. And so when God speaks and reveals who he is and, and how he is reaching out, he taps into our ways of understanding. God connects in the ways that we can grab hold of and understand. And so when we see 
this idea of a substitutionary sacrifice for us, we can say, oh, thank God, I don't have to pay the penalty. I'm not going to get that more than the slap on the buttocks, right? I'm not going to have to get that because God has taken care of that. Jesus takes the penalty. But here's the thing. We get confused and we think, ah, that's exactly what's going on. That's why we're saved, because God gave a penalty <laughs> to his own son in our place. I think it's just a picture, a, 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 help, a help to us to grab hold of the idea that we are set free. We are forgiven. And in the Good Shepherd, we get a different metaphor. Kind of a contradictory metaphor. The Good Shepherd is laying down his life. Over and over he says it in this passage. Not because he's taking the penalty, but because he loves so fully. So, uh, without limits, he loves his flock. And he gives himself freely. He's come to do this. And this is the meaning, another way of understanding the cross. The cross is God's full display of his unholds barred love for you and me. His willingness to do whatever it takes. He's not paying a penalty here. He is pouring out his love like the woman who uh, pours out the, the perfume on Jesus' feet. Right? God is pouring out his love in his redemption and bringing us into the fold. Right? Protecting the sheep. I like that image. And we may choose or pick and choose which images uh, that we connect with in the scripture. Right? We may say, what I need right now is a rock. Maybe what I need right now is a quiet, still water to lay down beside. Maybe what I need uh, <clears throat> is a lamb of God who can take this guilt away from me. Maybe what I need is a king who's going to make sure that everything is running as it should. All these metaphors, and yet God is greater than all of them. God is beyond our metaphors. God is, is uh, revealing himself to us that we might connect. But the one I love the most, I think, uh, is this good shepherd who just pours out and pours out love for you and me.